welcome to today's video. My name is Tolumi Abiola Yetiji. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to make a bomber jacket. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Exciting. A bomber jacket is really nice to make. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make it easy, nice, and straightforward. My name again is Tolumi Abiola. I am a creative educator and a fashion designer with over 20 years experience in the industry. And on this channel, what I do is share tips, insights, and gamut construction methods everything you need as a fashion designer as a creative or as someone that just enjoys sewing so if you've not subscribed to my channel before we start you want to subscribe right now so guys let's go into the making of this video to make our bomber jacket this is what you're going to need obviously you need your fabric i'm going to say about two to three yards of fabric depending on the type of sleeve you want how long you want your bomber jacket to be and the kind of fit if you want it to be a free fit or you want it to be fitted when you are putting in the measurement and you're cutting you're going to apply whatever decision and whatever style you want your bomber jacket to have into your cutting obviously you need your chalk you need your scissors you need your tape measure and very importantly you are going to need something we call ribbing so this is um ribbed fabric and with ribbed fabric it's usually tubular if it's coming as a old fabric so if you look at my ribbon and, and this ribbon is what you usually find um at the end of a bomber jacket if you're wearing a sweatshirt you see it used in sweatshirts as well you see the fabric stretches just like this and um you see this is woven as a tube and i have this um by the meter or by the yardage and you basically just cut what you need and then use it for that sometimes you don't have it on a long row of fabric like this you just have them cut you know in maybe like six inches or eight inches just in strips you can use that as well so just know that when you're buying your ribbon it either comes on a long roll like this or comes as singles also this ribbon they come in different colors some of them actually do have stripes as well and all of that so when you are choosing to buy your ribbon you want to buy the one that will match with your fabric you know you could decide to go with a plain one that will match or if you're working with a plain fabric you could decide to do one with stripes or what have you so you definitely do need ribbing we're going to be using some ribbing for the arm and the sleeves and also the neckline of this bumper jacket now these are the main materials that you need now we go to our main bumper jacket and the first thing we're going to try to do is deconstruct this main design and i'm going to do again a very very rough sketch of what our bumper jacket should look like this is a very rough sketch so don't judge me by my rough sketch bomber jacket now we have the front of the jacket and i'm gonna have the back of the jacket what you would notice is that the front of the jacket is in two parts as you either have a zipper in the middle air or you have buttons whatever you feel you know comfortable with for this one i am not going to be using a zipper i'm going to be using buttons but you can decide to put um a zipper in yours so yeah so we have the front of the jacket and very similar to the front is the back of the jacket that's i mean this goes for the body of the jacket both the front and the back that's number one then number two is basically the sleeves and we have two of that that's the next part that we will need to cut and then the third part will be the um will be the cuff the cuff on the end of the sleeves which will be made of the ribbon fabric so the top part will be the part where we are using the ribbon fabric for which will be the cuff the end which is on air and the neckline and these three things we are going to be cutting with ribbon so now we need to start by cutting the front and back of the jacket then we'll cut the sleeves and then we'll do the ribbon now the measurements that you need to make this you need your bust measurement and um i would really say you don't need your waist measurement for me i will mostly just go with my bust and hip measurement these are the two measurements that are usually very important when you're making a bomber jacket also you're going to need your sleeve length you need your sleeve width which is basically the circumference of your hand yeah and then and then you also need your shoulder so i would say these are the top measurements that we need now the first measurement we are going to use to cut the body is the bust measurement in this case we are working with a bust measurement of 42 inches and now to this 42 inches we are going to be adding some allowances but before we get there we go to the hip as well the hip 
tape measurement in this case is 48 inches another measurement that i have not put here is the length of this jacket itself now for this jacket because i want my jacket to be quite long i'm going with a 30 inches length because i want the jacket to be long so the length of this jacket is 30 inches the length of 30 inches is from the shoulder air to the end but we are going to be adding some ribbing on the bottom air an average length of the ribbon will be about three inches so whatever you have on air you want to take away that three inches and that will be the length you're working with so if we take three inches from 30 we are coming back to 27 inches so you are actually going to be cutting this 27 obviously you need some sewing allowance half inch on the top and half inch on the bottom which brings us to 28 so you're going to be cutting a length of 28 inches now to the width the hip measurement is 48 and the bust measurement is 42. now if you're a very curvy person and your jacket is going to be long then you have to consider your hip measurement so basically when you look at these two measurements you use the wider the wider one out of the two in this case the wider one is 48 so i'm going to be working with 48 inches to this 48 inches we're going to be adding allowance on all the sides which is half of an inch in four places that makes it two inches for allowance and a total of 50 inches if you want your jacket to have a free fit and you want to add some room in your jacket which i would say you should definitely have then you are going to be adding room allowance to your jacket as well and it will be a minimum of four inches you can do as much as six inches but i would definitely say minimum of four inches if you want to stay in between you can add five inches so let's say we want to stay in between and we have five inches that makes this to be 55. in other words we're going to be cutting a width of 55 on our fabric with a length of 28 inches I have now folded so i have cut the 28 inches length by um the 55 inches width and what i did was fold into two first two equal bits the old 55 inches length folded that into two then folded over that but when i was now folding over i made sure that there was an extra one inch hanging out here now this extra one inch is basically going to be the zip allowance in the front when we we're doing the calculation i didn't bother to add an extra zip allowance because i made this 55 inches i added an extra one inch but you may want to add extra for your zipper allowance that's totally fine as well so now we have folded this bit now the part that is longer the two part that's longer is going to be the front and this part with the fold is going to be the back so this is going to be the center back and this is the center front i am now going to flip this over and do it this way we are now going to be shaping the neck the shoulder the arm all and the rest of that and the body will be done we'll move over to the sleeves then i'll show you what we're going to do with the cuff at the end the sleeves and the neck so what you're going to do right from this fold is measure three inches do a mark on it measure eight inches and do another mark on it on your eight inches point you're going to mark one inch down if you have been watching my video you're familiar with me doing three eight and one and a half down but because this is a bomber jacket we are doing one inch down i am now going to take my ruler and do a slant line all the way now this has been done and it represents a slant of the neck and we're going to come back to that you are now going to come to the depth of the back which is on this fold and you are going to mark two inches you don't need the back neckline to be low you need it to be high as you would have in a bomber jacket for the width at the back we are going with about four inches and already what we have here is three so we are going to just mark another half of an inch we have done half of an inch here 
because by the time we actually sew it it's going to come back to four which is here so that's why we have done three and a half so if you want to do four we have three and a half here but by the time we join it take some sewing allowance it would mean the half is going to go by the time we do the sewing together so that's why we've done three and a half and um we've done two inches here and that's it for um the back neckline now we are going to come to the half hole this is where you need your shoulder measurement for the shoulder measurement here the shoulder measurement we're working with is 17. so what you do with these is divided by two when you divide it by two, you're going to have eight and a half. 17 divided by two is eight and a half. And then we are going to be adding half of an inch to it. So from this center, this is three and a half. You now follow this slant and measure what you have, which is nine inches. So we are going to be shaping the arm wall from here. However, if you want your bomber jacket to have like an oversized effect, and you don't want the joining of the sleeve to rest on your shoulder you want it to appear a bit bigger it may be what you add in an extra one inch to it remember bigger is always better than smaller if it's bigger you can always make it smaller but when it's already small it's a struggle to make it bigger so you can always make it bigger so another extra one inch to give our bomber jacket a sort of oversized effect now you're going to come to the length so from the other side here which is a fold everything is a fold i am just going to measure 10 and a half to 11 inches now if you look on your screen you'll be seeing our measurement for arm hole and you can follow this chart to know what to use for the arm hole depending on your bust measurement so for this we are working with this um you can use 10 and a half to 11 for this bust measurement and this is where this is coming to so this is where the point is now i will just measure that again on air and draw something like a straight line across so this is the point that we've measured for ample we are now going to go again to the bust measurement remember that when we're working with this what we actually worked with to cut this week was the hip measurement we now need to use the bust measurement to shape this bit on this arm line the bust measurement here is 42 we add 42 and we talked about adding half of an inch allowance on all sides which is two inches that gives us 44 that gives us 44 and also we talked about a room allowance of four to five if we are still adding four that gives us 48 if we're adding five that gives us 49 but i'm just going to stick with 44 just because it makes calculations a bit easy and it's all rounded up so 48 is the old measurement for the bust front and back now if you divide this 48 by four because this fabric is divided by four we are going to add 12 and you come to this line measure the 12 and you mark it this is my 12 and that is where the shaping of this arm hole is going to come to so i'm basically going to do the shaping this way now my arm hole is done and what i'm going to do with the rest of it is basically just go this way all the way to the end so it's just a line that just goes all the way to the end there and that's the sort of shape we are going to have at the end what we have here will then be wide enough to get to the e if your e is not as wide maybe you're not too curvy then what you will do is just take it straight down try not to measure the waist you don't need the waist measurement here because you're still going to have an elasticated bottom with the ribbon when the ribbon is in place so you don't need to measure that just take this all the way down if your bomber jacket is short as well so maybe you want a crop one you still don't need the waist just take your bust measurement all the way down put the ribbon in and it will give you the effect that you desire so our side is done our all is done neck for the back is done we're pretty much going to follow a similar neckline for the front the only difference with the front neckline is that it's going to be lower so instead of doing the same two inches for the front we're going to be doing about four and a half to five inches for the front depending on the kind of effect you want to have i will usually not like my bundle jacket to be too high because we are still going to be putting ribbon on the neck as well and that's just going to raise it up a bit so i am just going to stick with four and a half and i mark my four and a half here so basically the shaping for the body is done we just need to cut it now the 
side shaping that we did, the slant of the shoulder air and the neckline are basically called the same neckline for both of them. Now, if you take away the one with the folded end here, that's going to be your back piece. And I'm just going to put it aside. You are now going to have something like this for the front. Remember also, we have marked the four and a half depth for the front. And with that, you're going to reshape the neckline on the front. You reshape that. And that's your front piece all done. And this does mean that we are pretty much done with the cutting of the body, front and the back. Now, if we go back to our sketch and what we deconstructed, this has been sorted. We now need to go over to the sleeves and then we'll move over to the ribbing. The sleeves are really basic as well. If you have not seen my video on how to draft a sleeve block, please do go to watch. You will find easy, easy method on how to draft a sleeve. And now you can get a sleeve with any type of garment. You'll be able to do your sleeve. I am just going to quickly cut the sleeve now. You need your sleeve length. Now for this one, I don't exactly want my bumper jacket to be really, really long on the sleeves. I want it to give me something like a three quarter effect because I want to be able to sort of wear it casually. So I am going to be going for a length of about 22 inches the length of my sleeve and the width of my sleeve is just basically on my arm width which is 16 but always at two inches to whatever I'm measured so it's gonna be 18 so we have 22 by 18 inches width now to cut our piece what are we cutting out the length is 22 but we are going to be adding a cuff to it at the end which is gonna be about three inches as well so instead of doing the 22 length you take out three inches and that's going to be 19 inches so which means our length is actually 19 inches if you add the lowest to it half inch air and half inch air is going to be 20 so we are cutting 20 inches for the length of the sleeve mm -hmm. now for the width of the sleeve you're going to need some room allowance as well and you're going to need sewing allowance i would just say whatever you have add about four inches extra both room allowance and sewing allowance so 18 plus 2 inches will be 24. basically so i am going to be cutting two rectangles 20 inches by 24. you can get this anywhere from your fabric just make sure you get two rectangles 20 inches by 24. have been cut 24 inches right here and 20 inches on the length now this is the piece that we're going to be using to shape the sleeves and the first thing we'll do is shape the top of the sleeves to shape the top of your sleeve you need to know the circumference or measure what you have on the arm all of your main piece which is just here I know this is slightly fading into the fabric so I'm putting it here so now if you do your measurement what I have on here is about 11 inches. What we need to remember as well is that we're going to be joining this by half of an inch. What we are going to do is that we're going to shape this and try to put the 11 inches here. And what you want to do is just try to find a curve here that when you put it on here, it will be equal to 11. So I am just doing just a really gentle curve that is just like this. And this gives me my 11 inches that's going to fit into this sleeve. So I am just going to basically cut it this way. And when you cut it, you have something like this. So this is what I've cut out of it. And you see, it's just a very gentle, you know, slope. Now we are going to shape this so that it can be smaller towards the end. And what I would usually do um, towards my end it just measure three inches from this end here which is here and I take my ruler and draw my curve so three inches from the end and I do my curve all the way and with this the sleeve is done so we are done with the second part just nice and easy that way and the last part that we want to do is the ribbing part and this is where you take your ribbed fabric 
So I am gonna be cutting six inches, but instead of me cutting six inches, we need to remember that we should put some allowance as well, which will be a one inch allowance. And I will explain why it's one inch. But first of all, I'm gonna mark seven instead of six and cut that all the way. going to open one end remember this is tubular so I'm just going to open it and when you open it, it becomes one white piece now to use this we need to fold it this way and this is the reason why we've added one inch as the allowance because we are using it folded this way this will be the end on the bottom or wherever we are putting it and then we have three and a half here we sew by half of an inch and we have three left you know because that's what we intended to have now i will just be cutting about two of these because i can already presume that this will not be enough so i'm just going to cut two of these this also will probably tell you if you are buying it um and you're buying the strips you would need i believe an average of two to be on the safe side um you want to do three or you will need an average of two to get um this done for you so now we have cut the pieces and now basically for the sleeves because the wrist circumference which is up here is usually around eight inches that's what you have on the average if you measure it to be tight and fitted it will come to seven but you don't want to have that sort of fit so if i measure mine to be tight and fitted it comes to seven that way but if i do eight it, it just gives me like a nice comfortable um comfortable fit if i do nine it may be a bit too free and it doesn't make that you know fitted on me so i could do anything between eight and eight and a half for my wrist so if i'm doing eight and a half for my wrist i'm going to add another one inch allowance as well which will allow me to join it together so basically i'm going to be cutting nine and a half for the width or for the circumference of my wrist in two places because they are two sleeves so i'll measure nine and a half now Now this nine and a half has been cut. Um, to use it, I am first going to join it together this way, long way. When I have joined it together, I am then going to fold it over, and it will come to something like this with the seams hidden on the inside. And because this is stretchy, and because this you know pulls that way, you can now stretch this to join the wider end of the sleeve. After you've joined the sides of the sleeve together, you basically just pull this in and you stretch it to fit in here and that's how you finish the sleeves. And that's the sleeves done. Now coming to the end or the M of your jacket is basically something similar. You need to measure the circumference round this whole end when you are done sewing the sides together. You measure that circumference. When you have measured that circumference, whatever you have subtracts four from it, which is basically like one from every section. So if I measure this, this is 13, so basically it will be 12. If I subtract one and I'll be cutting about a width of 48, which will be long. If one strip is not long enough, feel free to join it to be longer. And then I am going to be joining that to my M all around and put my zipper afterwards or my button afterwards. You could also decide to use fabric on the beginning. Some people do that as well. When you're joining it, cut another band of your fabric and join it to the end of this so that when you see your bomber jacket, it's basically the fabric that starts it and it goes like that all the way to the end. For the neck, it's the same concept. However, when you measure the circumference on the neck, you subtract only two from it. You don't want to subtract four. Measure the circumference of the neck front to back, subtract two from it. Also, the height for the ribbon that's going to be on your neckline, you want it to just be about one inch, which means when you're cutting it, you want to cut one and a half inches in two places. So it will be a total height of three inches that you will be cutting when you're cutting the ribbon for the neck. So basically, you measure one and a half this way. It's just going to be a lot shorter cut that out and join it to the neck and if you put all of this together you would have your bomber jacket all done feel free to experiment you can add pockets if you want to and you can watch out for my next videos that show you how to do the sort of pockets you want to have on a bomber jacket if you want to see more on making garments garment construction or you even want to learn professionally make sure to visit our website www.kentschoolofashion.com where we have several courses that you can learn online at home 
in the comfort of your own courses for young people and even courses for older people as well thank you guys for watching this video i will see you in the next one don't forget to like subscribe and share see you in the next video